This is the second video I'm recording on the subject of how to create a fresh installation of Windows 11 on a computer that meets the minimum requirements and be able to not have a Microsoft account. The first video that I did, I discovered live real time while I was recording that video that I could temporarily use a Microsoft account and then completely remove all traces of it after the installation is complete. This method never uses a Microsoft account at all. This method was brought to me brought to me by one of the technical participants on my channel. I'm going to tell you more a little tell you a little bit more about that later on. I'm going to get right into it here. So I'm going to switch over to this computer. This computer is already has Windows 11 installed. This is the installation I last demonstrated where I temporarily used a Microsoft account and then removed all traces of it. It's irrelevant that this computer already has Windows 11 because I'm going to restart it and delete the hard the C drive partition and do a complete fresh install. This computer currently is not connected to the internet. And you can see that down in the bottom right corner we have the wireframe globe and no internet access. So the ethernet is disconnected and the Wi-Fi is not uh, activated. I have this connected to my computer by a capture device. So I'm going to restart it and then boot off of the USB memory stick that is still plugged into the computer. And we'll do a fresh install of Windows 11 showing how to do this without using a Microsoft account at all. So here as it's restarting, I'm hitting the escape key and actually still not sure if I'm going to be able to accomplish it this way. Now I already have secure boot disabled. And so yes, that did not work. So what I'll do, what I found I can do with this is use the Windows key. <laughs> throw the stuff around, Doug. And then advanced startup. So this is change advanced startup options and I'll click restart now and restart now and this will give me an opportunity to tell the computer to boot from the USB memory stick. Secure boot has to be disabled in order to boot from a memory stick because that's part of what secure boot does is it doesn't allow booting from anything other than what has been authenticated as the authorized boot device. So here I'll choose use a device. If I didn't have secure boot turned or uh, disabled, this item here for my USB device would not even display. It wouldn't even be there. So I'm going to click on that. And this is going to cause it to boot off of the memory stick that's plugged into a USB port, which has the new Windows 11 installation on the first video that I did for installing Windows 11 without a Microsoft account, I show how to download and create the installation media. So the rest of that information is on that other video. You can go back and watch that. There'll be a link in the description of this video and there'll be an end card at the end of this video directing you to where that video is. So click next and install now. Keep in mind the Ethernet cable is not connected. So setup is starting. Now this video, as with the other videos that I've done on Windows 11, are unedited as to the process of installing Windows 11. I make that qualification because I did do a little bit of editing that was unrelated to the actual process. Click Next. And here I want to choose Custom. I cannot choose Upgrade Install from this point. If I choose that, it's going to tell me that I have to actually boot to a operating uh, uh, functional operating system and plug in the USB memory stick and run the setup program from there. So custom install is what I have to do if I want to do a fresh install. What I'm going to do is delete only the C drive partition. I could delete all of the partitions that are on drive zero. I don't want to delete partitions that are on drive one because that's my USB memory stick. So coming back up here 
All you have to do is the C drive partition. It's optional as to whether you do the others. I like to leave the others because they often have content from the manufacturer of the computer, including, including reverting it to the operating system that it came with. So here I highlighted that partition and I click delete and then click OK. Then I click on this unallocated space of 220 gigabytes and click next. And that's how I tell it that I want to install on this, uh, on this partition. Now I'm going to give a little bit of a peek about where this information came to me from. It came from the regular participants on my channel in the technical discussions. In the technical discussions, we have various things where I connect remotely to somebody else's computer. It could be an average end user's computer. It could be a technical person's computer. It could be one of the participants on my channel. We interact with each other in the chat room. Here's kind of what it looks like. Here's the, uh, this chart starts out with a chat room. And then we show, uh, the, uh, we have a Zoom session, and the one that brought this to my attention is Javi Manor from who watches from Israel, and he discovered this. He told me he didn't find it from someone else. He went tinkering around and figured out himself, and I'm really proud of him. And thank him for showing me this because I care about this. I do use Microsoft accounts on some of my installations, my own computers especially. But for my client computers and offices that are not using Active Directory domain services and they just use a peer-to-peer a, a -peer server, for instance, I'd rather have local user accounts. So this shows how it can be done with a fresh Windows 11 install. So now through the rest of this video, I'm periodically going to turn off the picture-in-picture -picture that you see in the bottom left corner so that you can take the playhead and scrub forward until you see me come back on screen unless you'd like to watch it go through these processes. But I'm showing the full recording of the whole process, including the time that we have to wait. Now this is about to restart, so I'm going to stay on screen here for a little bit more because I'm not sure offhand what happens next. Now the sequence is going to be to start this process without being connected to the internet. I did not do that in the one of two video that I did on this subject. I, I think I'm going to be titling these two videos as one of two and two of two, meaning this is the second technique. So this technique means don't have, have it connected to the internet until it gets to the point where it requires a internet connection and then connect it just long enough to click the next button. After clicking the next button, disconnect it from the internet and then go through the rest of the process. When you get to the point for a user account, it should ask who's going to use this computer without prompting for a Microsoft account. So this, I, I'm going to stay on screen while you've got a black screen there because it looks really weird when I don't have anything on screen. There's our spinning circle of dots in the Dell logo. Just a moment. So my channel, what I do is, is people can send me an email and request a session. We'll connect by Zoom. The technical people in my chat room sometimes will bring them in on Zoom too and help with whatever needs to be done, whether it's a normal end user or a technical person. So here we've got the uh, right countries uh, is being asked. So I'm going to get the right mouse here. I get mixed up between the, all the mice and keyboards I have on my desk. And then the United States keyboard. A second layout? No, I'm going to click skip for that. Now here it's wanting me to be connected to a network. So here's where I'm going to connect to the network because I can't click a next button until I do that. I don't want to use the Wi-Fi. So I'm going to go click, uh, I'm going to go plug in the Ethernet. I don't want to use the Wi-Fi because if I do that, there's no way for me to disconnect the Wi-Fi until the Windows 11 desktop actually comes up. So I'm going to punch over here to my camera too, and you'll see where I'm going for that. This computer is behind the desk. I've got an Ethernet cable in my handy dandy clip on the desk. 
and you'll see it uh, come live on screen if I punch that quick enough there up at the top you just see that identifying connected and there we go so it is connected so I'm going to click the next button then right away I'm going to go disconnect it now this time I'm going to I'm going to click the next button I'm not going to change the camera view you know where I'm going to um, I, I want to leave it on this on screen so you can see what happens. So here's the next button, and I'm going to go disconnect it from the Ethernet. Disconnected. It's checking for updates. So it's disconnected from the Internet now. It's not going to be able to find updates, right? We should have coming up at some point here the prompt for user account. I'm not sure how, I don't know how long this is going to take. So, nope, there it is. Who's going to use this device? That's it. Bada boom, bada bing. I'm going to call this user and click next. No password. I'm just going to click next. When I deliver a computer to a client, it's going to have a password. But for doing my setup purposes, I don't put any password in. Privacy settings, I just kind of have my my own habits here uh, no diet um, required only for diagnostic data no inking and typing I do leave tailored experiences and advertising ID on I know those are hotly argued by people I don't really care that much click accept and here we're actually about to get to the Windows 11 desktop this is so awesome Zvi <laughs> Thank you. You're the man. It is really fun and highly educational on my channel when we get these technical minds together and people go off and research and try to find a better way to accomplish something or find a solution for an issue. We can have somebody brings an issue to us and they're all doing research on their individual computers. Somebody comes up, here's a, here's a possible answer, here's a possible answer. We go try to implement that answer. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't great group of people. We're having a wonderful time together. I invite you to come and check it out. To find my channel, you can go to a browser and in the URL type youtube.com forward slash LWTDB. That's an abbreviation for my channel name, which is Live Windows Training Doug Betts. I have a variety of playlists. Uh, some of the things I do is lab work. I do a Tech Tales where I'm telling about the actual billable work that I do with my real world clients. I've been a professional independent computer consultant for about 30 years. Uh, more years before that working for other companies. Uh, the Tech Tales tell stories of my actual billable work. There's um, so, uh, a series on online security. There's a series on Windows tips. There's a few more series. There's a couple of gentlemen that I am kind of mentoring through starting their own IT businesses. So a lot of fun things we do. So here we are, the Windows 11 desktop. We are on with the user account of user. Never touched a Microsoft account. This was a fast easy method. Notice in the bottom right corner, still not connected to the internet. Now what happens if I connect to the internet now? Is it going to prompt to create a Microsoft account? Let's try that. So I'll go plug in that ethernet cable. I do not know whether it's going to prompt or not. Bottom right corner, you see it connecting to the Internet, identifying, says Internet access, network, waiting, 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 launch Microsoft Edge, so that Microsoft knows there's a computer out here. Is this going to trigger a Microsoft account? Of course, Microsoft Edge is going to want me to sign into account, but I'm not going to do that. I'll click Complete Setup. And I'll, I like focused, so that has just less network traffic going on. Speeds the computer up a little bit if it's not trying to bring down all those images. 
Welcome to the Microsoft Edge. Time to expect more. This got this let's go. I think that's a first time thing, meaning if I close it and reopen it, can I get away without doing that at all? Yes, I can. There it is. It looks like that's a done deal. I like it. All right, so that's all for this video. I hope that's been useful. If you want to reach out to me, request a support session, perhaps. The way to do that is send an email to dougbetts at livewindowstraining.com. Let me know just a little bit briefly of what you like help with. And the way we, what we do then is set up a day and time for us to connect. We get together on Zoom face to face during a YouTube live stream. People from the chat room come in. Sometimes they join us in the Zoom session to help with whatever issue is at hand. It can be tutoring, training, fixing a problem, something's not working right, a concept you want to explain, whatever it may be, we're here to do that for free for you. So I hope that's been useful. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.